How's it going guys? Welcome to Season 5 of my Vegas Golden Knights Franchise Mode Series. As you can see here, NHL team has 94 offense, 90 defense, 92 goaltending. AHL team there, 82 offense, 84 defense, 81 goaltending. AHL team's looking a lot better, obviously. We've been drafting for the past few years, uh, really building that prospect pool. I'm going to show you guys a look at the lines right now. You guys missed the last couple episodes. We actually finished last in the league, back-to-back -back years. I uh, don't really know what happened, but our team is looking a lot better now. Had a lot of growth from the younger players, as well as we signed some big-name free agents. So, first line forward here, we have Jonathan Duran, Tyler Johnson, William Nylander, so very solid first line. Uh, Nolan Patrick, Larkin, and Androv on the second line. I'm going to try Patrick on the second line right wing, but if he doesn't produce or grow at all, he'll probably drop to the fourth line, maybe even be traded. Really not sure why he doesn't seem to work out for me. Third line there, we have Tyler Benson, Dreisaitl, and Greg Ranko. And then fourth line there, we have Sherback, Gergensen, and Poirier. So pretty solid group of forwards. Defense here, we have Carl Alsner and Hamnick, both we signed in the summer. Provorov, Hannafin on the second pair, and then DeKaiser and Lodgren on the third pair. In goal, of course, we have Corby Salo, 90 overall. He's huge for our team. And then Hammond there, backing him up. HL team here, we have Matthew Strom, Velarde, and Artukin on the first line. So pretty solid first line in the HL. Uh, DeMeo, Vegdemo, and Lind on the second, Zirkles, Hintz, and Tulola on the third, and then Kabitsky, Chittle, and Fogel on the fourth. Defense here in the AHL, we actually have Wenski, so I'm thinking about trading either him or a different NHL defenseman. Um, that way, like, I don't have Wenski saying the AHL. Uh, I'm going to see what other kind of options are available to us. Top pair that we have Olas, we actually drafted with our second overall pick last year, unfortunately. Neither year we finished last, we won the first overall pick, but he looks like he's going to be a very good offensive defenseman. Uh, Tulola and Day there on the second pair, and then Mikola and Niku on the uh, third pair. So AHL defense is actually very solid as well. And then in goal here, we have Vavalainen, or I think someone said it's uh, Vavalainen. I'm, I'm missing like one of the Vas, and uh, Hallen in there backing him up. So both teams looking pretty good, I think, for this season. Also, you guys are wondering who the captains are. Dreisaitl has been an alternate for the past few years. I made Nylander the captain as the best player on the team, and then Hamnick I actually gave an A as he's our best defenseman, and he's the first kind of a uh, big name free agent to sign with us, so I figured, why not? Also, I'll show you guys the owner goals for this year. Um, we actually went all the way from, I think, a hopeful at the end of the last season. Uh, now we are considered a champion, I believe, so that's how good our team got. Uh, primary goal there uh, is just to make the first round of the playoffs. I'm thinking we can do that. Secondary goal is defend home ice and get at least 22 home wins this year. That's also very doable. And the uh, second secondary goal we actually already got, which is upgrade a team store. Pretty easy uh, secondary goal there. So honestly, I think all three goals we can get this year. Um, those goals are not really champion goals. So even though our state of the team there is champion, they're giving us like hopeful goals. So um, that should really help us out in completing all those, gain some extra finances. So like I was saying, I'm going to try and look at a trade here with a defenseman. If we can't make one, then I'll just start the sim, kind of see how things go. But um, I'm really happy about the two teams we have. I'm really hopeful for this season. So right here, guys, I'm trying to trade to Kaiser to Winnipeg for Kyle Connor, who obviously is a very good young winger. 23 years old, uh, 85 overall, left wing 2A4 with low lead potential. DeKaiser's, I think, our oldest defenseman. Maybe Alsner, but obviously DeKaiser's lower rated. Rolls the top four, but he's currently playing in the bottom pair. Um, 85 overall, this of course will allow Wierenski to come up when we trade him. Also, of course, we're actually making about 500k there in uh, salary. Then we're also adding a few AHL prospects there, just to kind of add them on. Um, up the value. So I think the value is about double on our side. We'll see what Winnipeg says here. If they say yes to, I think we'll also be sending down Nolan Patrick. So he'll be playing on the top line there with Velarde and Strom and hopefully all three of them can just have an amazing year in the AHL and uh, really grow their rating. But here we go. We'll see what Winnipeg says. Uh, we have to call up Wrensky, so trade accepted. That's awesome. So right here, guys, a quick look at the new lines. As you can see, we actually now have Benson there on the third line right wing with Dreyer, Saddle, and Connor. And then fourth lines, Poirier, Gergensen, and Sherback. And then, of course, on the defense there, we actually have Wrensky playing in place with DeKaiser. And like I was saying, that AHL top line there looks so dirty. We got Strom, Velarde, and Nolan Patrick. All three are actually 2017 draft picks. Uh, Patrick there, number 7, Velarde 11, and then Strom uh, 12. So we'll see what, how these uh, guys can do. I think that first line could be like the best first line in the AHL. So I just finished saving through October. Not the greatest start here. 1-4-2, and two, but last year I'm pretty sure we had a really good start. And then immediately after, it started to suck. So maybe this year... Uh, rough start, but then we can turn it around. Um, I think it's only like seven games in, so too early to call. So we're now at the end of November here. We definitely turned around our slow start. We're now 11, 10, and 3. Uh, really made up for those first seven games. AHL team there, 7, 7, 2. Fan happiness there is at 72. I think it was at 40 at the end of October, so that's definitely gone up. Uh, Lockham chemistry at 79, not too bad. So hopefully we can just continue winning games here. And if we're in a playoff spot, the trade deadline, make a couple moves, and hopefully make it back to the playoffs. So it's now the end of December. We have a record of 15, 15, and 6, so kind of right around 500. AHL team there, 15, 9, and 3. 
Um, still don't really feel like it's worth making any changes as that'll affect the locker room chemistry. Our team's playing pretty good, and I think if we kind of wait it out, um, they'll really start to get rolling here. So, um, also game coming up along the trade deadline. We'll see where we are at the halfway point of the year, and just kind of go from there. So we're now at the end of January here, which is the halfway point of the season. We have a record now of 22-19-8, so finally a positive record. HL team there playing very good, 20-13-5. Uh, Fan happiness still isn't the greatest. Uh, locker room chemistry now in 80. We've actually had a couple huge injuries, so I'll show you guys those first. Uh, before we look at the standings, even though there we can see uh, we're fifth place in Pacific. A few points back of Vancouver at 55, who's in a wild card spot, so not too bad. But like I was saying, a couple huge injuries that I thought would actually make our team play even worse than they've been playing. You could see them there, but uh, I'll just go to the scratch lineup here to show you guys. Um, one of them, of course, was Corpy Salo, our starting goaltender. Also lost Alzner there, our second best defenseman, and then Poirier there, a fourth line forward. So. Pretty big injuries. Corby Sal is not back till March. Alzner is not back until I think the end of February. So um, I think I might even trade for a better goalie as right now Hammond's our starter. I'm not sure how we're even winning games with him. He's like an 81, maybe an 82 right now. So that alone is pretty impressive. And like I was saying, guys, uh, we're fifth place right now in the Pacific with 52 points. We'll see where we are in the entire NHL as well. Uh, just kind of give us an idea. Also take a look here at the games played. So 49 games to play. We actually have three games on Vancouver, so we get, you know, one win, one overtime loss, and a loss. We're tied with them, so still very much in the playoff race there, which is good to see in the entire league here, just kind of give us an idea of where our team's at. We're 18th, so not too bad. Uh, you'd figure if we finish too higher, we should be in a playoff spot at 16, uh, depending, of course, how all the conferences work out. Uh, lean score here is actually dry style of 32 points. It's kind of crazy. Uh, third line center there. 49 games played, 32 points. duran has got 30. Nylander's only got 18, or sorry, uh, 29, 18 assists in 49 games. Greg Ranko's got 29, Larkin 24, Andronov 22, Johnson 22. So we really need to work on scoring. Uh, for whatever reason, nobody is scoring for us. Um, where is Andronov? Yeah, he's our 21-year-old rookie, or I guess second-year player now. 22 points, 41 games. Expect a bit more from him. Liljigan, though, 21 points as a defenseman. That's pretty solid. Uh, Connor there's got 20 points. For whatever reason, we're just not scoring a lot. Um, kind of just like all lines are producing a little bit, but no one's really taken off. So maybe we have to try and trade for a really good scorer as well as a better goalie. Um, goalies here, speaking of which, Corby Salo, 2.73 against isn't the greatest, 0.95 save percentage. Hammond's actually got better stats than him, so maybe we don't need a goalie. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see here. AHL goaltenders, uh, Vava Linen, of course, in the NHL now, but was playing pretty good there in the AHL. Hallen also has pretty good stats backing him up. I'm going to take a look at the AHL scoring leaders, see if that first line of Strom uh Velarde and Patrick has been killing it so Strom 35 points is very good Artukin 32 Vegemo 27 uh Patrick 26 games played 18 points of course he's kind of bouncing between NHL and AHL with injuries seeing me with Velarde there 17 points 35 games not too bad so overall AHL team I think is doing pretty good too so I just got this trade offer from Dallas uh they want to give me Brett Ritchie in their third round pick in this year's draft for LA second round pick and then two prospects there in Chance and Riley so I'm gonna take a look at this um, see how good Richie is, if it's worth doing or not. Um, value looks to be about equal. Uh, he's 83 overall, so he's actually, like, when everyone's healthy, not even cracking our, our fourth line. So I'm uh, going to say no for that. Just got another trade offer from Carolina. They want the same two prospects, Hedberg and Riley. So I'm guessing the assistant coach put them on the trade block or something. And they want to give us Victor Rask. I'm kind of interested in this, um, seeing what his rating is. Making $4 million, though. Um, 79 overall. Yeah, uh, no thank you. Just got another trade off. This one's for Burmistrov, and they want our second round pick and this Olin prospect. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at this one as well. Uh, getting a bunch of interesting offers here. Burmistrov, we'll see how good he is. 84 overall, so again, he'd be like a fourth line winger for us, um, in which case, really not worth giving up the pick and the prospect. So we're at the trade deadline now in February. We have a record of 26, 26, and 10. So uh, pretty much around that 500 mark. Corpy Sal actually just returned from injury, so no longer have to try and make a trade here. Uh, for a better goalie. 62 points, 4 points back in Vancouver. With Corby Salah returning, I think we definitely can make that push into the playoffs, especially if we can add a couple pieces here, uh, which we're going to try and do. So we'll see what's available and hopefully squeak into the playoffs this year. I'm trying to make a big trade with New Jersey here for Kyle Palmieri, obviously a very solid winger. 30 years old now, 87 overall though. And he's got 4.5 stars shooting there. He's considered a first line forward. And as we know, we really could use some scoring help, which I think he'll add. Uh, one year less, we'll have to resign him, otherwise, we're losing him for nothing. But Giving up a second round pick here in this year's draft. Sherback, who's currently playing fourth line winger for us, really hasn't developed as much as I thought he would. Defense there at three and a half stars isn't really a fourth line winger kind of guy. Um, and then just a seventh deeper prospect there. So I think Paul Mary definitely helps us right now. If we can re sign him too, it's a solid trade. We'll see what New Jersey says. 
and they accept that trade. So I think that will really help us out with scoring some goals and making that playoff push. Razor Grabs trying to get another trade to add some scoring to our team. Trained for Svechnikov on Detroit. Really solid winger. 24 years old. 87 overall. Low league potential. Making a big offer here. Trading Chance. Top 9 for potential prospect. Provorov, obviously a solid defenseman, hasn't grown at all for us. Same with Hannafin, but Hannafin's uh, making 250k less for one more year. Uh, Greg Ranko here, he's kind of gotten pushed out of the way with Palmieri, especially if we get Svechnikov back. Really no spot for him. Uh, Buffalo Sabres second round pick, and then Riley. Another reason I can trade Provorov too, I forgot to mention, is uh, that defense we drafted is actually looking very good now. I think he's in 82 overall, and when he was getting regular ice time, he was in 83, so he's left-handed as well. Um, he's definitely going to pass program and Hannafin in no time, um, in which case, you know, I'll make sure he's getting all the ice time he needs. So basically need to get rid of one of them, especially two with the salary cap. Um, it kind of makes sense. So the trade values on our side, it looks to be about double, honestly. Hopefully it's enough that Detroit uh, lets Svechnikov go. He's also on a pretty good uh, term there. Two years left, 4.6 for 87 overall player. Isn't bad at all. Let's see what Detroit says. Here we go. Trade rejected. So maybe if we add another second round pick to that prospect, we'll say yes. So looking at the picks, guys, and rather than adding a second round pick, I'm going to try adding um, a third round pick. It's a bit more than that random prospect. I think this should be enough. Like, it's definitely double now. Here we go. Uh, we have to call up Sean Day, so they did say yes. That's awesome. So after those trade guys, here's a look at the forward lines. we got Svechnikov, Johnson, Nylander on the first line, Palmieri, Larkin, Andronov on the second. So the top six there looks a lot better. Should be able to sort of score some more goals. Uh, Connor, Dreisaitl, Duran's a very solid third line. Poirier, Gergensen, Benson, that's uh, also a very, very solid fourth line. Uh, defense here is looking a little weaker now. Um, as of course, we had to call up Sean Day, but that's because uh, Lodrigan's currently injured. I don't think it's a long-term injury. He should be back by the playoffs at the latest. So um, I like those trades, like I said, after looking at you know the halfway point, how we had really no leading score. Everyone was kind of around 20, 30 points. Uh, I think those two trades are necessary, and hopefully it's enough. Get us over this hump here and get back in the playoffs. So I'm assuming the first game before the trade deadline, and Corpy Sallow just got injured. He's out till April 6th. Uh, really, really hurts us. I don't think I can stop it in time to uh, make a trade. I'm going to try, though. If not, uh, basically just kind of screwed here, and I uh, have to hope, I guess, that uh, Hammond can carry us until he's back, or until Corpy Sallow is back in about a month's time. And yeah, I, I clicked stop simulation. Unfortunately, it stopped the day after the trade deadline, of course. So... Hopefully Hammond can carry us. We'll see what happens. Lodrigan just got back from injury, so I wanted to show you guys our top six now that everyone's healthy. Alzer and Hammonick, of course, on the top pair. Hannafin and Olas on the second pair. Olas is now an 85. He grew by three in like two weeks somehow, I guess. Just the more ice time there really helped him out. He's going to be such a beast for us. And then Renski and Lodrigan on the bottom pair. I really like this defense. So Corpy Salo literally just got back two days ago, and he's already injured again until May 3rd, so until the end of the season. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong with him. His durability must be like a 60 it really sucks too because he's a 90 overall goalie. He would have carried us, I think. And um, after he got injured, we just started losing. As you guys can see here, we've lost four straight in the month of April. Um, March for us was no better. Uh, he went down the beginning of March. We didn't do very good. So kind of sucks. I think we made some really nice moves at the trade deadline to make our team better. And then our 90 overall starting goaltender goes down. We have an 81 backup. Really not much you can do. You can see there, uh, Lilligren was also injured. And he just came back. We had a couple defensive injuries. Um, really sucks. Uh, we're not going to be making the playoffs with a negative record. And it kind of sucks when, I guess, injuries decide the fate of the game. So I'm really bummed out about that. Um, you guys can let me know, too, as I'm looking here where to scout, if maybe you should turn injuries off, as I think like they're just kind of getting ridiculous at this point. But if you want them to stay on just to make it, I guess, more realistic with the chance, let me know. So end of the season here, 33, 39, and 10. AHL team at least is good, 39, 20, and 6. Fan happiness there is one of the lowest I've ever seen it there, 38. Makes sense, though. Um, you can see in March, a lot of losses there. And like I said, when you lose your 90 overall starting goaltender, it's uh, it's tough to come back from that no matter what. Finished there, 7th place in the uh, Pacific, 76 points. I mean, we're, at the trade deadline, we were on pace with Vancouver. Like, we were kind of sticking with them in terms of how many points we had. They finished with 91. So I think with Corpus Salo and Net, we finished with 91 points right around Edmonton, Vancouver. And we're probably, you know, 50-50 or more than 50-50. Like, there's a good chance we're in the playoffs there. Um, like that just, uh, that just really sucks. I think Corby Sullivan down at, like one of the last two years as well. So hopefully we didn't get last again this year. Um, we got second last, so I guess that's improvement. Like I said though, like that last month and a half, I think this last year we just completely sucked the last month and a half, kind of on purpose though. This time was not on purpose at all. Take a look here at leading scores. Looks like Paul Mary is actually the leading scorer there. 68 points in 80 games. That's pretty good. Svechnikov 56. So our two guys we brought in. Are our two leading scorers. I think they probably did most of their scoring on other teams, but 
still good to see. I'm probably going to try and uh, bring back both of them. Our Svechnikov signed. Palmieri I need to give a new contract to. Duran there, 53. Same with Nylander. Nylander I'd like more than that. 89 overall playing the first line. Dreisaitl, 45. Really solid there from a third line center. Johnson, 41. He needs to be better. He's at 82 overall right now. His morale is so far down. Um, that happened before, so maybe I need to find a new first line center. Maybe like trade him and Patrick. Um, I'm not really sure, but team definitely needs a shake up. Larkin's down to an 83. His morale's down. Benson there. Um, Andronov's down to an 84. So, I mean, the team's unhappy, obviously. Connor's at an 81. That's going to happen. They're not playing good. So, kind of sucks to see. Um, what are you going to do, though? Take a look here at the goalies. I'm wondering how many games played Corpus Sal even had. Yeah, he had less than Hammond this year. He had 38 games played. That's just ridiculous. Hammond actually had decent stats too. 2.33 against. So I guess I can't really put it all on him. Corby Salo, um, 14 and 16. He had about the same record. So maybe it's not fair to blame it on that. I don't know. Definitely just something not going right here with the NHL team. AHL team though. Strom at 65 points, 65 games. Point per game in the AHL. That's awesome. Vlardy at 54. Artukin 49. Um, or sorry, uh, Vegetimo 54. Vlardy 38. Too many Vs there. Nolan Patrick at 30, so not too bad. Uh, rest of the team kind of chipping in. Take a look at the AHL goalies as well. Uh, see how Vavalainen's doing as the starter. 2.12 goals against with a .922 save percentage. So really solid stats there from him. Um, obviously, we'll have to just kind of wait and see now what was on with the AHL team. Back-to-back -back Calder Cups would be pretty nice. Uh, I'm just still so pumped out about how bad the NHL team is doing. So starting the AHL playoffs now, we're going up against the Charlotte Checkers here in the first round. Uh, Going to see how they do here. Hoping uh, they can have some pretty good success. Last year we won the Calder Cup. Um, would love to repeat as Calder Cup champs. I mean, we have a really good prospect pool. Um, even though our NHL team, for whatever reason, isn't doing that great. And I think really both teams should be doing good. For whatever reason, just the uh, AHL team, the one that coming through in the sim. Corby Salas finally back here. A little too late, though. Um, we actually lose first round there. That's depressing. So the draft lottery results just came in. And for the third time, we missed the playoffs. We didn't win the lottery. Um, we're actually picking fourth. So we finished last twice, and we got the fourth pick and the second pick. And then the third time, we finished second last, and we get the fourth pick again. So um, I don't know. Our luck here in the draft lottery isn't too good, but hopefully we can still find a good player. Um, owner goals apparently changed from making the playoffs to winning the Stanley Cup, which is a bit much, um, as, you know, we were not looking very good there. I don't know why that happened. Obviously, it had to do with um, us being a championship team. And we definitely did not come through on being a championship team. Really disappointed in this season. Um, like I said, I think injuries is a big part of it. Let me know if, I th if you think I should turn injuries off. I think that would really kind of change how what's, what's happening. Is that's, I think, messing with our team a lot. Maybe we just have bad durability players. I'm not sure. Um, lots of big names are retiring right now. As you can see there, we got the Kessler, the Brent Burns, Getzlaff, Parise, Pavelski, Carter. A lot of big names. Dion Phaneuf, Brent Seabrook, Mike Richards. Let's see if he's 94 overall, like his hot card's going to be. He's a 68. Um, that's rough. Andrew Cogliano there, 1,031 games played. Um, dude just never gets injured. So, so many people um, retiring. Let's take a look here at goalies as well. I think there's probably going to be a few solid goaltenders retiring here. They're probably not very high rated anymore, though. Luongo, 77. Ryan Miller, Lettinen, Ward, Elliott, Dubnik. Uh, Dubnik's 35. Well, I didn't know he was that old. That's kind of crazy. Um, no one else though. So some pretty big names there. You can see we're starting to get into the uh, deeper years of the franchise mode and Obviously, there's a new age coming for the draft guys I want to take a look at the awards here um, See what happens. So Stanley Cup champion LA Kings President's Trophy St. Louis Clarence S. Campbell LA Kings Prince of Wales at Washington Capitals Ovechkin there with the Art Ross and the Hart Daddy with the James Norris McDavid with the Lady Bing um, Calder there went to Svitov. I thought it might have went to our uh, defenseman there. But if he doesn't have uh, however many games played it is, he actually might be able to win it next year, but he's probably passed it already. Uh, Quick there with the Con Smythe. Bishop with the Vesna. Fitzpatrick with the William and Jennings. Bergman with the Bill Masterson. I'm not sure who he is. Bergeron with the Selkie. Ovechkin and Ted Lindsay. And then Tarasenko there with the Mauricio Shard. HL Awards. Minnes or not Minnesota. Iowa Wild there with the Calder Cup. I'm um, just going to take a look here. I think our team, yeah, we won our division. Um, Pacific Division Champions, I think that was it for us. Player Awards, we'll take a look here. Um, usually it's like the same guys. Tursum Baev, his name sounds familiar. Was he like, he was in a franchise mode, I think, or he was on our team or something, but unfortunately for us, no Player Awards for the AHL. I thought maybe Matthew Strom could have got one, but that's all right. I'm going to take a look at the draft now. Hopefully we can get lucky again uh, with the fourth pick. We've had two players so far in the draft that are immediate like NHL players. I uh, would love for that to happen again. 
and I guess we'll see what happens in the offseason. We really don't have that much cap space either, so we're going to have to get pretty creative here with trades or something. I mean, even our stats are fine. I don't know what it is, but this team is just, like, not performing. So I just sent to the fourth pick. The Jets got Vlasic here, a high elite right-wing sniper with the first overall pick. Uh, Minnesota here got a medium elite defenseman. Dallas got a medium elite left-wing power forward. So really hoping there's still an elite potential player left at the number four spot here. Two top fives. One is Seabrook, and the other is Nickel. Um, both are considered two-way forwards. One's a left wing, one's a right wing. One, our scouts say, is top six. The other, our scouts say, is top nine. So I guess we'll go with the top six guys. Are the top six guy? It's definitely one of these two. One of the guys are going to go top five. Please be elite. Here we go. Uh, medium elite. That's awesome. So we now have the final pick in the second round of the draft. Of course, that's LA's pick. They won the cup. Just going to take a look through the second round there. I think there was an elite player, actually. Somebody got really lucky. Low elite there. Coin. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the first round as well. See if any other elite players were drafted. Looks like we got the last one. Never mind. Neil there. Uh, medium elite goalie. We have Corey Pisalos, so that really shouldn't matter for us, unless, of course, he just keeps getting injured and the guy, like, retires early or something. That would really suck. So, last pick here in the second round. Let's try and get another good pick. Um, there's a top nine forward there. That's honestly a pretty solid pick. Um, Two-way forward. There's another guy two-way forward projected to go in the third round. Um, I think I can just take him. I think it's a solid pick. Um, I think we still have one pick in the third round as well, and then a fourth, fifth, and sixth. So I thought we had a third round pick, but we actually didn't. We traded it away. We do have a fourth round pick, though, and Jets just got a top nine forward guy in the with the first pick in the fourth round. So there's clearly still some solid guys left. Um, right there's a top six D. I think I'd rather that than a bomb six forward. Let's take a look at the potential. So a high top six D, and then for exact here, the oh, there's a couple top six Ds for sure, but they're both fourth round. Um, which we're in right now, but we could probably maybe steal one in the fifth. So let's go with the high top 6D. He could be even better than that. Uh, low top 4D. That's actually a very good fourth round pick. Making our fifth round pick here, the Jets just got an AHL guy. So that kind of tells me probably not too much great stuff available. Um, there's a bomb 6 forward there. A couple bomb 6 forwards. Let's see for exact if any of those top 6Ds are still available. None of them are. So I think we're just going to go... Um, with the bomb six four there that pro was projected to go in the fifth round, um, wherever he is, uh, um, Samard, let's take him. Hopefully, he is bomb six, medium bomb six. That's solid for the fifth round. And finally, here our final pick of the draft. We have number two in the sixth round. Um, there's an HL top two D. There's a seventh D. Both exact. A couple of high bomb sixes. Um, there's a couple of exact bomb six fours. I think I'd rather one of these guys. Um, let's take a look here. The Americans got. Really good defensive stats. He could maybe turn into like a really good fourth line guy. Canadian here is a power forward. I think I'm going to go with this American Benino there. Um, let's see. And he's a low bomb six. But like I said, he got really good defensive stats. Could turn into a very solid fourth line center for us. So we're now at the re-sign phase, guys. As you can see here, Dreisaitl is currently considered our best center. As Larkin's morale's down, he's at an 83. Normally he's an 87. And making 3.5 million as an 87 is amazing. So hopefully he bounces back. Gergensen needs a new deal. He's a pretty good fourth line center. Uh, Vlerdy there is now an 82. He's probably still an AHL guy for us, unless he grows a ton over the summer. Johnson's an 81. That's probably one of the biggest falls I've ever seen. Uh, what's our first line center? Making 8 million. I think I'm going to trade him. He went down like Amarel for us before when I traded him, then I signed him. I'm just done with Tyler Johnson. So uh, I'm going to give Gergensen an offer here. Hopefully he doesn't want too much. 2.75. That's pretty fair. I can probably get him for like 2.4 there for two years. Uh, Johnson definitely going to trade and just sign the best center I can. Uh, Vegemo here is 25 now. Let's see if we can just get him for like 875k for a couple of years. He's like an AHL, NHL kind of guy. Um, no one else there is probably worth signing. Left wings here. Benson needs a new deal. He's going to want to raise for sure. He wants 4.6 million. Jonathan Durant also probably going to want to raise. Or actually, he was making around, I think, 3.7. So if we give him 4 million for four years. That seems like a lot, though, considering he's 26. How do we get him the cheapest? The cheapest is four years. So I guess $4 million for four years. I don't know how much money we have. We have $24 million in cap space. It's really not a lot. Kyle Connor right now is down in uh, morale. What's he going to want? 1.1. This actually might help us out. He wants what his rating is, not what it, what it was at 85. Um, let's see here. We can kind of just manipulate this. Eight years. So he's paying until he's 32. He wants a million dollars. Okay, so... This is a ridiculous contract. This is definitely, like, I don't know, working the system. One million. Actually, I can give him more than that just to make sure he says yes because we're giving him uh, more years. So let's give him 1.2 million for eight years. 
He's 79 overall right now, but if he bounces back in morale, he'll be an 85, making 1.2 million for the next eight years, which is uh, crazy good value. Fogel here's been on the team for a while. It's probably going to be an AHLer for life, but you do need a couple of those guys. Uh, this bomb six dude is pretty good, 21 years old. Needs his first contract, I'm guessing. Uh, the rest of those guys aren't worth signing. Right wingers here, Nylander needs a new deal. Sam Paul Mary, Poirier as well. Nolan Patrick, I'm guessing, wants a two-way contract. He doesn't want a two-way contract. Um, that kind of sucks. I mean, we have to pay him more money, but I'm thinking I could probably get him for like 900k. So the same as an AHL contract, or same as a two-way contract. Um, it's just that it'll count for 900k when he's in the AHL, which will be most of the time. Uh, Zirkel's here, 2478. He doesn't want a two-way contract either. I, you're not a okay. We're just gonna qualify him then because he is not an AHL guy. Uh, Seabrook here is the guy we just drafted. We'll give him his uh, rookie deal. To Lola here, 2376, not too bad. We'll give him an offer. Uh, let's see, both of these guys, 2472, you are not good enough to resign. Um, and then 2373, that's probably just good enough. 750k there for one year, just in case it doesn't turn around for us. So, taking a look at the wingers here Nylander, Palmieri, Poirier, um, Benson, and Durant, all need new deals. 24 million for five of these guys. That's like a little over 5 million per player. Nylander alone is going to want like 9 million, so I think we're going to lose somebody here. Um, my plan is probably to try and sign or probably just to offer qualifying offers to Benson and Durant just to kind of get through this window um, and then make offers to the two UFAs in Palmieri and Poirier. We can do the same thing for Nylander as well um, as I don't think we have quite enough cap right now. Looking at the defense now, um, Hamannick and Alsner are both 86s, so they've dropped a bit. That sucks. Uh, we definitely paid a lot to get them, but the morale's down as well, so that's probably the reason I just noticed. Hannafin and Olas are 84s, Lodrigan and Wierenski, they're 83. So our top six... If everyone's morale's up, I think is actually a very solid top six. Um, Sean Day here wants a new deal. That's pretty fair, 900k, two years, two-way. He's been called up once in a while. Uh, Tulola wants, doesn't want a two-way deal, but he's not an NHL guy, so we'll just qualify him. Uh, let's see what else is available here. 22 years old, 75 overall. Um, oh, did not mean to do that. Um, I'm missing who I wanted to try and click. Uh, Johansson, 24, 77 can give him 800k for a year that seems fair 2372 we'll give this guy a deal as well uh this is the guy that was actually on the team from the beginning olis matson 2472 you're not good enough i don't think anyone else needs to resign down there or this ufa benda he must have been drafted a couple years ago give him his first contract and then goalies here uh corby Salo hammond probably gonna let go Probably going to find a younger backup. Uh, Vave Line in here needs a re new deal. Just been in the HL for a while. We'll give him that. Uh, Hallinan's a 77. He's looking pretty good. We'll give him that 800k. And then this backup also needs a new deal. I mean, I could probably find better than a 22-year-old St. Two overall backup goalie. So just going to let him go for now. See what's available. So like I was saying, with the left wing and right wings, um, Benson here, I'm just going to qualify for now. Just to make sure we basically just don't lose him. Same goes for Durant. Um, I plan on probably, get, I'm going to have to pay them all more money than that. Um, Nylander, I'm just kind of curious what he wants. 7.2, so he wants about 3 million raise. We have 24 million. Poirier, kind of curious what he wants as well. 2.8, I think that's actually not too crazy. I can probably get him for like 2.5 for three years, seems fair. Uh, Paul Mary here wants 7 million. That is a lot of money. So Nylander will qualify, and then we'll see how much money we have left to go with Paul Mary, and then if we trade Johnson, how it's all going to work out. I think we probably are going to lose Johnson and keep everybody else. And then maybe, hopefully, one of our young players comes through over the summer. I'm not really sure how it's going to turn out. So Kyle Connor accepted our offer. He's already an 81. Like I said, when he gets up to an 85, making $1.2 million uh, for the next eight years, whatever it is, that's a ridiculous contract. We're actually getting him now for like $3 million cheaper. Uh, Seabrook there, our draft pick accepted. Poirier accepted. Gergensen, um, some prospect. This guy rejected, um, not acceptable, so I guess probably tried to lowball him a bit too much. Fogel accepted, Deneen, Sean Day, Patrick, Tulola, Vegdemo, Johansson, Hallinan, Vavilin, and Olin. So everyone accepted. We'll go see now how much money we have uh, to spend on all these guys. Um, like I said, I had to give out a bunch of qualifying offers just to make sure we didn't lose people. We still have 18 million here in cap space. Um, is this one of the guys I think that said no? So we'll give him like 800k, 50k less. Um, that should be good. So. Looking through here, 75 overall defenseman, I just noticed. He could probably uh, play in the AHL right now. The rest of those guys, I don't think are any ready, are going to be ready. 
Um, Lau here, he might have also been a guy we kind of lowball would try 825k on him. So we have Paul Mary, who needs a new contract, and then we have five guy or one, two, three, five guys there. At, um, then we have five guys there that are qualified. So if Paul Mary gets say six million, even we have 12 million left to sign Nylander, Ben Sinjaran, and Tulola. Um, these two will get like no money. Um, so if Nylander gets say six and a half. We're now down to six for Benson and Durant, so we're going to lose one. But if we trade Johnson, we could sign both and maybe have a bit of money. So I guess we'll do that and hope it works out. Palmieri wants $7 million there for two years. He's 30 years old. Um, he doesn't really get much cheaper, even if you go to eight years. Um, $7 million actually at two years is kind of the sweet spot. So let's try $6.5 million, or let's try even like 6.25 and see if he takes that. Um, if not, we still have a couple days left to negotiate with him. And we could raise that to six and a half, which I'm sure he'll say yes at six and a half. And like I said, we'll have to trade Tyler Johnson, and I just, I guess, just kind of try and find a new first line center. Um, let's see what happens. This guy rejects again. Um, offers disappointing. Uh, Palmieri accepted though at six point two five. That's really good value, I think, for him at eighty seven overall. This guy rejected again. So I guess those guys are staying pat on like the eight hundred seventy five k they want. So I guess I'll give them that. And we'll move on now to the UFA signing. So I thought I wasn't offering these two guys enough, but I actually just realized because we have these five uh, qualifying offers out, even though it says 43 of 50 contracts, it's actually uh, 48 of 50. And I think the other two must be the goalies because these guys both said we have a full roster. So I'm just going to make note of their names, Petrovicki and Lau. Um, try and trade some worse players um, on the first day of UFA and then go and give them offers and hopefully bring them back on the team. So here, guys, I look at the free agents for this year. Some really good players. Of course, the best one there, Newlander, is our player. Um, next there, you have Stefan, 88 overall, Boone Jenner, Matt Dumba wouldn't be too bad. Um, CC's available as well. He'd be a very good a defenseman for us, making six and a half million. Uh, you got Stahl, Niskanen, Brodeen's not too bad. Uh, Truba there, only 85, so we kind of stalled out. Benson and Durant, a couple more of our players. Um, so basically, what my idea is here: try and trade Tyler Johnson's eight million salary cap. Um, I might even try and trade Alsner, honestly, because I could use that sign to try and get um, CC Dumba. They're both better, both younger, um, and they'd be making about the same. So let's see what we can do now on the trade front, hopefully make this team better. So my first trade here, guys, I'm actually just trying to trade a couple prospects, Nolan and Deneen. They have decent potential, but they're both older. Uh, Nolan is 24, only 72 overall, so he's not going to turn good. Deneen there, 23, 73. Um, I'd rather just have the picks as well. We can try and get a couple... Um, better prospects at a free agency. Uh, the two guys we drop, for instance, unless, of course, there's better available, in which case we'll sign them. Uh, now we have to try and trade Tyler Johnson for basically whatever we can get. So right now, guys, I'm going to show you how hard it is to trade Johnson. $8 million salary, 81 overall. Obviously, his morale's way down, so he's going to go back up in overall when his morale goes up, but for whatever reason, the teams aren't taking that, that into consideration. Um, as you can see there, rejecting him for a fourth-round pick. So I think I just have to wait until his morale goes up, put him on the block, and hope something happens with him. But right now, like, there's just no other option. Right here, guys, we're trying to trade Alzer to the New York Rangers for their second and third round pick. Obviously, I don't want to trade him within the conference. And I was trying to get a first round pick from him, but it didn't seem like he was quite worth a first round pick. I'm going to use that $6.5 million to try and sign either CeCe or Dumbo, who are both younger and better. So we'll see what New York says to this offer. Trade accepted. So we're back in free agency, and I still need a backup goalie, and a Hammond's actually the only one available. So... I'm uh, going to try and bring him back to the team here. I'm just going to offer him 1.7, which is actually cheaper than what we were paying him last year. Also going to look at the two-way deals here and see kind of if there's anyone really good available. Um, I'm actually in goalies right now, so we're going to have to get out of that. And I think, too, we only have a couple of roster spots available. Um, Hammond obviously takes a goalie one. So a few, or actually a couple top six guys there um, would not mind getting either of them. There's a top four D as well. Uh, some top nine forwards there. A lot of the guys are like 20 years old, so that's pretty good. Um, those two guys we lost out on actually aren't even worth keeping looking at this. I could probably even trade away a couple more guys to try and sign some of these um, younger, uh, better potential players, which I think we'll go and do uh, right in a second. Um, first, I want to make an offer on both CC and Dumba. We can afford to get both. I'm not really sure which one we'll, we will get, though, so I'd rather just kind of make an offer on both and take it from there. As you can see, they're both 88 overall. Uh, Dumba's got high top 4D. CC's got high elite, or sorry, exact elite, so... Make an offer on both of them. Gonna have to overpay for both. We'll throw a uh, seven million at CC there for three years, and then we'll throw, I guess, like six point seven five at Dumba for four years. Um, see what they say. If they both accept, we'll actually have to trade one away. But I doubt that'll happen. Um, so we'll see what happens with those two. 
And right here, guys, I'm training a couple more of our kind of worst prospects for a fourth and a fifth just to clear up some roster spots. And Anaheim says yes to that. So we'll go and try and sign some of those like top six guys available. I'm not sure how there was like that many good rookies available in free agency, but obviously we want to take advantage of that and try and sign some of them. I think we have enough roster spots now to do that. So um, there's two top six here. A lot of teams want them. Obviously going to pay them the max, try and get them on our team. Um, top six forwards are usually like second round draft picks. So we can get them um, for free, then that's awesome. Actually, this guy's 2374. He only has three more years to grow. He might not be worth it. The other guy, though, is 22, um, so he's got an extra year. Uh, this top 4D, though, is 21 years old. He's definitely worth it. No one's given him an offer yet, so we'll do that. A um, couple top 9 forwards. The one's 20, um, so again, he's really young. Lots of years to grow. It's kind of what you want to look at, uh, look at the young, the age and the overall. This one here is 2065, so he's not too bad. Uh, 2073 is very good. Um, that's much better, so we'll give him an offer as well. And then 2675 is not really good. Top 6D there. Uh, there's one or there's a couple that actually there. 22 and 21. We'll give them offers. I don't think I have the roster spots for all these guys, but um, there's gonna be other teams competing, so might as well throw those offers out. See what happens. Uh, I'm gonna couple, sim a couple days now. Try and trade Johnson later on. That's really hurting that we can't trade him. Um, still have to sign Nylander, Durant, Benson. Lots of work to do. As you guys can see, Petrovic accepted our offer. He had top 9 four potential, so that's good to see. Um, that was just a few days later. Um, Hammond accepted, so we got our backup goalie back. Um, this top 6D potential guy accepted. Same with a top 4D and a top 6 forward. Um, this guy rejected. Our roster is full, but he's still a free agent, so we can trade some worse potential players. Uh, Nikitin accepted top 6. Um, we probably don't have enough space now for Dumbo or CC if they say yes. We have to go trade um, a couple more of our worst players. If not, maybe like 4 or 5 of our worst players, even though we already traded like 4 of our worst players. I'm um, just going to have to basically just keep cutting the worst prospects to keep making room for better ones and hopefully that'll just mean our you know young players just keep getting better and better so right here guys we're trying to trade a few more of my lowest value players for picks just to clear roster spots uh tulola is on even, not even signed right now he's an rfa 25 years old 29 overall he's a good ahl defenseman but that's about it uh same kind of with mikola 25 78 never gonna make the nhl hence has been in the ahl for a while rather make room for some younger players with more potentials so Carolina says yes to that. We actually have a ridiculous amount of mid-round picks now. Uh, we have four fourths, four fifths, and then two sixths in this year's draft, uh, which is kind of crazy, with actually two seconds, two thirds. So we're going to go try and sign those guys that said yes, but we're, our roster is full. Also, that makes room for Dumba or CC if they say yes. As you guys can see here, Matt Dumba actually accepted our offer. I didn't think he would. I gave him about 500k more than he wanted. And even though we finished, like, bomb the league last year, he still said yes. And Cody CC said yes, too. So our defense is so good now. Um, that potential uh, prospect there with Top 6D said yes. Um, I think there was another one that I made an offer to as well. Um, that's crazy. I don't know how much salary cap we have now, but I don't think it's enough to sign everybody. Um, I don't know what we're going to do here. Let's go look at uh, owner happiness there. I just noticed is ter terrible. Um, that's kind of funny, but... So we just signed the two best defensemen free agents. Uh, we still have six million in cap space, so it actually is probably enough to get Nylander back, but not Benson or Durant. So we need to trade Tyler Johnson. Um, he'll give us enough to tr probably sign everybody else on our team, and our team is going to be stacked from that point forward. So uh, I'm going to try and trade Johnson for literally. I'll I'll give him away for a seventh round pick. We just need that eight million dollars in salary cap. Right here, guys, trying to get trade with Detroit for their first round pick. They're a rebuilder, they're always missing the playoffs. So this pick has a chance to you know win the lottery, be a top five pick, or I guess top three in that case. And for whatever reason, it's on the block. Hamnick's our fourth best defenseman now. Would love to clear his salary, give us more money to spend, especially if Johnson's gonna take a while to move, offering them a second and third round pick with that, and a couple unsigned prospects there that aren't too great. So if they say yes, I think it's a great trade for us. Here we go. And Detroit says yes, so that's awesome. Um, like I was saying too about our defense, we traded away Alzner and now Hamnick. Brought in two better, younger defensemen, though, in um, Dumba and CeCe. Still can't believe we've got both of them. Also, Olaster, who we drafted is an 88, so, I mean, we are stacked. Of course, um, Tyler Johnson, though. Morale just keeps going down. He hasn't gone below 81, though. I mean, I might honestly try and trade him for a 7th round pick. Some other team wouldn't take a 4th. I doubt they'll take a 7th, but we could try it just for fun. Send him to Detroit. I mean, it'll make their team a bit better. His morale will definitely go up. He's worth more than this, but it gives us $8 million in salary cap, so... Let's see what Detroit says. Yeah, so they don't even take a 7th. I think we'll have to wait till the end of the summer when hopefully his morale gets back to at least like an 84. He'll be tradable by then. So now that we have the cap space, we're going to make an offer to Nylander. 
hopefully get him a little under what he wants in terms of like the UFA. So he wants seven and a half million. I mean, he really wasn't worth that in terms of production for us, but um, we do still need a really good player. So I think he'll probably take seven by seven. Um, seems like a fair offer for him. He hasn't even had another offer from a different team, uh, probably because they have to give up so many picks. Uh, then Drouin and Benson, we both need to sign still. Probably going to have to wait till the end of the summer for them as we need Johnson's salary really to get that done. As you guys can see here, Nylander accepted our offer there of 7x7. Seven seven. Also, uh, this Kavasha guy who we were trying to sign, we, need, we didn't have enough contracts for. Uh, he just signed 72 overall, top 9 for potential. I think he's only like 21, so that's awesome to see. Um, basically, now we have to wait till the end of the summer and try and trade Johnson. If Hopefully, he can get to like even an 84. Um, if we trade him, that'll be enough money for both Duran and Benson. Right now, I can probably sign one of them. Um, the thing is, we won't be able to sign the other, so I'll actually go take a look at that right now. Um, it kind of does suck that, like, I think his morale is going to bounce back. I don't know why he's not being traded for anything. Usually it's, like, a goalie who's 38 who you can't move. Um, Tyler Johnson's still a good player. Um, who sh Like, for a seventh-round pick, them saying no is just um, pretty dumb in my opinion. So I think Benson probably wants less. He wants 4.9. Duran wants 5. So uh, we can't afford one of them. Benson's a bit younger. We'll see if we can get him for, like, 4.5 for let's see for three years he'll probably say yes to that and then like i said Duran will just have to wait till the end of the summer once we can trade johnson uh to move on to or, sorry to sign him again and as you guys can see here tyler benson accepted our offer so like i was saying just gotta sign duran now um and to do that we'll have to trade tyler johnson so we're now in september and i'm gonna try and trade johnson to detroit again his morale has gone up a bit here uh he's an 83 overall now opposed to the uh what was he 81 so there's a better chance of him bouncing back. I actually set him down to the AHL and his morale went up because he became the AHL captain. So that's kind of weird. But we'll see if we can get Detroit's second round pick from here. If not, I'm just going to keep going lower. And hopefully they'll eventually say yes. I kind of trade all my uh, leftover players to Detroit. Kind of feel bad about it. But for whatever reason, um, they have a second round pick on the block with the salary cap to take Johnson. So kind of the perfect scenario for us. We'll see what they say. And the trade's accepted there. So finally they are moved on from Johnson. That is huge. Um, I kind of like I was saying about Detroit. I'm actually going to show you guys all of the players I've kind of given to them over the last, I guess, three or four seasons. So first off, there you got Hamnick. We just traded them. You got Provorov. Uh, Tyler Johnson's now an 86 for them already after getting traded. So that's why I don't understand why it was so hard to trade him in the summer. Uh, Greg Orenko's there. Mueller. So at least five players there um, that just kind of like lost a spot on our team are now on theirs, uh, which is pretty funny to me. And I think that we now have enough cap space, more than enough, to sign Durant. And we could actually even go and sign like another player or just try to trade for another player, I guess. They have a big cap. So after trading Tyler Johnson, we can now sign Durant here. Um, he wants $5 million for one year, which kind of seems like a lot. But um, I guess we could do that and see kind of what happens with him. He wanted like 4.7 or something for four years. Um, I'm willing to give him five for one. We'll actually still have $7 million in cap space after that, actually 7.3. I wouldn't mind trying to make a trade for a first-line center. It's something we still need um, after trading away Tyler Johnson. And as you guys can see there, Duran did accept that $5 million offer. So after trading away Tyler Johnson, we still need a first-line center. Uh, Dylan Larkin isn't that right now. He was an 87, but right now he's an 83 with his morale down. I'm um, trying to get Matthew Barzel here from New York Islanders. 24 years old, 87 overall, playmaking center. Really good offensive stats. He's got five-star puck skills, five-star shooting, five-star skating. Um, I'm also trading them Durant as we have a ton of wingers that are around 85 overall. We can afford to trade one, so they want him uh, packaged with Larkin, this Shipley guy, 7th D prospect. Good amount of value, though. 7th round pick there, kind of like a cherry on top. That guy's just there for the roster spot in Burroughs. Um, it'd be a huge trade for us. Give us that first line center. So let's see what the Islanders say. And they accept the trade, so that is huge for us. I'm actually going to flip that uh, Burroughs guy uh, just for like a 7th round pick or whatever we can get. I just don't want him. Uh, he was really bad. Also, I can show you guys right now that Olas defenseman, the, the guy we picked, is now a 90. So I think the start of last year, he was an 81. He got to an 82, then an 83. Then he was like an 85 in two weeks. And now over the summer, he's a 90. Best player on her team. Uh, he's an absolute beast. Also for draft picks here, we have so many picks in 2022. Uh, we have two firsts, and I think the Detroit one has a very good chance to win the lottery. Uh, two seconds, a third, five fourths there. Um, four fifths and two sixths. So, uh, kind of crazy how good this team is with all those picks. And we still have 10 million in salary cap, um, which is insane. We even have this Seabrook guy we just drafted, uh, fourth overall. Looks to be like he's probably going to be a very good player. Um, I'm really excited for the future of this team. Had to suck for a few, few years there, but that's okay, I guess. Um, and like I was saying, the one thing we were trying to do there was just trade this dude we just got. So, 
just got traded from New York Islanders. I'm not gonna make a move or anything, so let's just trade him here to the Rangers um, for what basically any pick we can get. Um, hopefully they'll give us a six for him. Uh, H, I'll talk to D. And they might say no. Oh, they said yes. So that's great. So after the summer, guys, this is a look at the team going into this season. Svechnikov, Barzil, and Nylander on the first line. Paul Mary, Dreisel, Andronov on the second. Andronov's morale's down right now. Should be like an 86. Uh, Connor morale also down. He should be like an 85. Uh, with Velarde and Benson, whose morale's also down. He was an 85 literally two days ago. Um, a bunch of second line forwards. Some guys just have to play third line. And then Poirier, Gergensen, and uh, Strom on the fourth line. All three of them are actually third line players. Uh, the rest of the team is second and up, except for Velarde, I think, is the third line. So uh, just kind of put Connor and Benson on the third as they're both two-way forwards. Makes sense. Hoping that everyone's morale can turn around once we start winning games. Defense, though, I'm really excited for. Um, we just added, like, three beasts to defense. Or Olas, we already had, but he's now a 90. Uh, Dumba and Cece, we signed both of them, which is crazy. Hannafin, Wrensky, Liljegren. All three of these guys are still, like, mid-20s or early-20s with elite potential. Haven't grown yet. Hoping they can start growing. Uh, Corby Salas Morales also down from last season in 86. He should be in 89. That's his regular overall. Him in there backing him up. So if we can win some games off the bat, I think everyone's morale will get fixed and the team will look even better. HL team here. DeMeo, Vegdemo, Patrick on the first line. Patrick's still in 81. So I mean, Velarde and Strom that were on his line last year both made the jump to the NHL. Patrick still, you know, hasn't grown much. Uh, Zirkles, Oliver, Artukin, Tulola, Chittle, and Seabrook there. Uh, Seabrook's actually, actually the guy we just drafted, so I want him getting some more ice time there. Uh, Kavasha, Petrovicki, and Kubitsky. In defense, we have Sean Day, uh, Heiskanen, Johansson, Graham, Niku, and Wolinski, I think his name is. Goalies are the same, Vavalainen, and Hallinan. So, like I was saying, I think the NHL team, once the morale gets turned around, will be very good. We also have $10 million in cap space now. Um, so the fact that we have, I'd say, a better team than last year with $10 million in cap space, and as I showed you guys earlier, all those draft picks... I mean, we are we are set, I guess. Um, AHL team, 81 offense, 80 defense, 80 goaltending. NHL team, 93 offense, 92 defense, 89 goaltending. So excited for next season. Hopefully, hopefully uh, after three years of sucking, we can finally start winning some games. If people stay, stay healthy, I think that's definitely possible. So that's it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.